Okay. Um, hello, everybody. First, thank you for taking the time to join us on this workshop. I'm going to share my screen so we can get things started. All right. I'm just going to minimize this right here. So today we're um, hosting an, a workshop on um, Eileen Citizens uh, Complaint Program. Um, but before we jump into that, a little bit of housekeeping, um, passing it over to you, Bailey. Good evening, everyone. My name is Bailey. I'm the manager of membership and organizing at WEAC for Environmental Justice. Welcome. Glad you could join us today. Just going to briefly go over WEAC's mission statement, which is since 1988, we've worked to build healthy communities by ensuring that people of color and or low income participate meaningfully, which means they are in part of the process in the creation of sound and fair environmental health and protection policies and practice. Next slide. And as a as we ask a uh, manager of membership, we're asking people if you have not joined we act to consider becoming a member because we put on great trainings and we're also building the most powerful of power is people power. That's what we're building for northern Manhattan residents and residents around the country to improve the environment and the health. So if you are interested today in becoming a we act member, it's $25 for a full calendar year. So if you signed up on May 26th, your uh, membership would expire May 26th of 2023. I'll put the link in the chat and I'll pass it on to the next presenter. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bailey. Um, of course, we are well into what, like the second year of Zoom. So a little bit of housekeeping um, for speaker view um, and gallery, if you would like to see everyone. In addition, please make sure that you stay muted. Um, if you are calling from a computer or a tablet, please mute your phone, mute your tablet, um, your devices. And if you're dialing in, please mute your phone. We don't want to capture um, house um, any um, background noises happening. We want to be respectful to the person speaking. Um, and going over to the next slide. Introduction, my name is Taina Wagnack. I am the Civic Engagement Coordinator here at WEAC. Um, and what that is, is to have the opportunity to host this wonderful educating workshop um, for the membership as well as community members. Um, we also have among us um, a few WEAC staffers, um, as you've already met uh, Bailey, um, and I'll pass it over to Charles. Um, we have LJ, Pamela, Taisha, um, Chris Dobbins, Jaren. Um, so if you guys could also take a moment to drop your name in the chat and your um, title as well so that um, our attendees will be able to know who you are. I just um, need to make one plug before you start. Sure, um, of course. June 11th, we have a... Uh, annual uh, June 11th is our monthly membership meeting. So hopefully we'll see everybody there June 11th. I know you will get the text in the, in the email. So please be prepared to participate June 11th at 10 a.m. Thank you. All right, thank you, Charles. So as we've been saying nonstop, you know, uh, idling trucks. So exactly what is idling? Idling is when um, a vehicle engine is left running um, while the vehicle itself is not is in park or not in use. So that could be, you know, um, the truck is idling in queue, the driver is taking a lunch break, um, making a phone call, having a cigarette break, or just um, waiting to, um, to load and un unload passengers or goods. So that itself is called idling because then your engine is left running. There is exhaust fume that is being released into the air and idling is illegal in New York state. There's three, there are three sections of law that deems idling to, to, to be illegal under the New York city admin code. Um, it is illegal if it lasts more than three minutes or more than one minute when adjacent to a school. Um, this refers to buses and delivery trucks. The fine ranges from $300 to $2,000 um, under New York city admin code 24 dash one to, um, which established the citizen complaint program that I'm going to be going into deeper after, um, after this. And then the New York City codes and rules and regulation um, um, 
provides that heavy duty diesel trucks and buses may not idle for more than five minutes. And those are those big um, processing vehicles that you've seen in um, Lower Manhattan. Um, and this also would apply to uh, temperature unless the temperature is less than 25 degrees and the vehicle is stopped for two hours. So those would be the exception for those heavy duty uh, diesel trucks. And um, before I continue, um, we have two DEP representative among us, Alyssa and Charles. Um, you are welcome to stop me whenever I, if I say anything that's incorrect or if you'd like to elaborate um, or provide additional information to our members. And you're also welcome um, to add information in the chat. If anybody has questions, please feel free to add those in the chat as we go along so that when it comes to that time, we'll be able to raise them. So why do we care about idling? So as I mentioned before, when the engine and the car is left running, um, the exhaust fume that is released into the air can be quite harmful to breathe in. Um, each gallon of fuel burn produces about 20, 20 pounds of carbon um, dioxide, and that is a greenhouse gas. Emission for trucks and buses release um, harmful pollution like benzene, formaldehyde, acetaldehyde, butanide, um, particulate matter. So like you see those black suits, they have like tiny invisible particles. And if you inhale them can be damaging to you and lead to uh, existing or um, health condition like lung cancer, um, allergies, um, it could impair your immune system, shortness of breath, chronic bronchitis. And particular with our communities, a lot of these um, idling occur in underserved communities. You know, you don't see them happening in Chelsea, but most often you see them in black or brown um, community areas and that greatly impact our children. Um, and so what can you do to help? One, the first thing is, of course, if you are someone who is known to idle, please don't do it. Um, and in addition to that, you can also participate in the DEP's Island Citizen Complaint Program. And so what that is, is you are able to record uh, truck or buses that idle for more than three minutes or one minute, as I mentioned, adjacent to a school, and you will receive 25% of any fine um, settled um, if the case is successfully prosecuted and the offending company is found to be in violation. So you'll be aiding DEP essentially to build a case against you know truck and, and buses that are known to be in violation um, of idling and again this is limited to trucks and buses and so for <coughs> you to be um, a successful um, idler or uh, idling comp uh, complaint you first have to create an account through the DEP's um, citizen complaint system so your name information so that you'll be able to file um, an idling complaint through that program, download the app um, called Timestamp so that you'll be able to record a time and date stamp video um, and also indicate where um, the location of the idling. Um, you also need to record a proper idling video and the app will aid you in doing that. Draft a successful complaint, upload the complaint through the citizen complaint system um, and track your complaint and the lastly request payment file which is filing with the new york city controller office for a vendor code so for the first step create an account so you would follow this qr this QR, um, code here and it'll take you straight to the idling website you will create an account your information your address um, just like you're setting up a g and an email account or any other account and this is what it'll look like once you have set up your, your account. And since you will be a new complainant, you'll have no complaints. And to add a new complaint, you'll simply click that tab up here. So it'll give you guys a moment to take a look at that. Again, this is the link. And we're also going to take a moment to drop that in the chat so that you'll be able to save that for yourself and check it out later. Step two, download the timestamp camera. So 
This is the link for Google Play if you have um, Androids or Windows. If you have iPhones and Mac products, this is the link for it. It's a relatively easy app um, to use. It's very, very helpful because it literally, when you take the video, it has the timestamp. So like the date when the video is taken, the time and the location indicated right there. And that is what you need for a proper, one of the component actually for a proper idling video. Step three, record the actual um, idling video. So your video again needs to show the time and date stamp, the name of the company, um, the logo, the license plate of the truck. So as you, you may have seen them, you have those trucks that have the name, if it's Amazon, if it's a warehouse company, um, some of those trucks, companies, they're privately owned. So they don't, they won't have, you know, their name and logo listed on their truck. So you just need the license number or DOT uh, number. And you can also use Google. Google is our friend. So if you're having a hard time finding out what this company logo is or who the owner is, you could do a little bit of a Google search, um, do a research on your own time and see if you can find the company name. If not, you use the license plate number, the location address of where the truck was seen idling. So you can either take a picture of the street map or go on your phone and take a screenshot of your location, or as I've mentioned, the timestamp camera app will indicate the location of where that island had taken place. And also only one truck or a bus on video, don't be greedy. So if you just, if you see 15 trucks, don't try to capture all, all the trucks together. Capture one at a time because you need to be able to fully capture the sound of the engine of that specific truck. And also you need to be able to capture the license plate. I also recommend that you take a picture of the license plate number of that truck and also take a picture of the truck itself idly, but capture on full video, one truck or one bus. And also capture that the truck was idling for more than one minute um, next to school or more than three minutes um, in general. And it's, again, the engine has to be on, like loudly on, you can hear the engine on the entire time that you are recording. And if you don't include any of those components, then it will not be accepted and the complaints cannot be pursued by DE because you're helping DEP build a case against an offending company. The, um, the DEP recently started accepting um, exhaust instead of sound, if there's a situation where you can see the exhaust, but you can't hear the sound. Thank you, Eric. So, so if you just see the fumes, if you capture the fumes on video, Eric, you'll be able, that'll be counted. Sorry for putting you on, on blast. Oh, uh, yeah, no, no, feel, feel free. Yeah, they, they just changed their policy with respect to that. That was a great change by the DEP. Thank you, thank you. That's very helpful. So you can also capture the exhaust coming out. Thank you and just captured a example of an idling video from Evolve. So we're gonna meet. So as you see, as I've indicated, there's the name of the company, the DOT number, getting all close and personal, and gonna let you hear a little bit You probably forgot to share your screen with sound. Sorry, you guys are not following. Thank you, LJ. Um, I apologize, everybody. Let's gonna try that again. Um, just two seconds and... Uh, you may have to stop sharing and then reshare. Okay. A little bit of technical difficulties, y'all. And then you reshare, just to make sure you, I think there's like a checkbox where you say uh, share sound as well. Is it, um, is it right under the share screen? Or eventually? Yeah, when you hit share screen, it should say something about sound on there somewhere. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. One more time. 
Perfect. On to the video. Are you guys able to hear? Or is it still the same issue? No, it's great. That's great sound. I don't so, see the video, though. Can you see the, the video? Okay. No. You can't see the video. Okay. All right. I think you're just sharing your sound now. You gotta <laughs> share both. <laughs> <laughs> while you're working on that um yeah. i had a quick quick question i can wait till the end though um i'll take your i'll take your question uh does the idling up uh, apply to trucks that use refrigeration as well if they have like a uh, stuff that's in the back that's being refrigerated um, no, it does not. So if it's if it's a refrigerated truck, it does it, those can um, are the exceptions. It does not apply to those. No, those are excluded. And Eric, the, um, um, the, the only counter exception is if, if you can show the refrigeration isn't powered by the engine. Um, right, Alyssa. Basically, yes, though, the the soft serves that you're talking about are generally powered by generators. But yes, there is that exemption uh, for the refrigeration trucks for the preservation of food based on federal concerns from the USDA. So that that is correct, Eric. Yeah, and if it's an auxiliary um, uh, refrigerator uh, powered by a separate diesel engine, then you can go after it. But that's kind of an advanced move. I, I don't understand how that works, but that's the rule. This is Pat Moore. I have a question. If it's a concrete truck and the, you know, the container is spinning, mixing the concrete and they're sitting idling, queuing up, waiting to deliver to the site, can we report them? Alisa or Eric, are you guys able to take this question? Yeah, the DEP won't go after concrete trucks that are using their mixer. Okay. All right, it's a processing device. That's what I thought. Thank you. Correct. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Okay. I think we can move on since um, a little bit still have a tech issue. Um, so now step four with writing the complaint. I was hoping to do a full screen. Um, first, identify the type of the vehicle. Is it a truck, bus, or a van? Identify the owner operator of the vehicle, um, document the DOT transportation number if that's available, document the license plate number, um, the location of the idling, the street address, uh, the time and duration of idling, if it was more than three minutes, more than one minute by school, um, state that the vehicle was not idling to power a loading or unloading or a refrigeration device as indicated just now. Um, and then also um, not to include passenger buses or private vehicles, but if it was a bus, state that the passengers were not seen entering or exiting the bus. Um, and if it is also a bus, to state that the, the temperature was above 40 degrees. And if it was island by school, state the name and address of the school and document as well the device and application that you use to take the pictures and videos. And um, some of these items are under active discussion as to whether they actually reflect the law between some of the citizens in the DEP. So these might, might may or may not change in the future. But we'll be able to receive an update right on the website um, if those are changed, right, Eric? I hope the DEP will update it to be accurate, yeah. Okay. Next slide. So this is a standard complaint outline. Um, I recommend that you guys take this straight from here. Um, essentially, it states, you know, I personally observe a type of vehicle with the U.S. Um, DOT number and a new blank New York State license plate, the number I own or operated by company name I leave for more than one or three minutes while park at address on such date from time until end of time the engine was not being used to power loading unloading or refrigeration refrigeration device and then also that you are submitting the video and pictures taken by yourself on phone um, using the app 
timestamp um, camera during um, your observation. So take a couple of minutes to um, either take a picture or a screenshot of this or um, type it out if you're able to. And I think I can try to drop it in the chat room so that you'll be able to use that. And this is the stem standard, not in front of school. And that's for the school. The only difference will be that you indicate that the vehicle was parked idling adjacent to the name and address of the school. Uh, but it's still the same thing. So just to take a minute to take a screenshot if you're able to, um, or see if you can quickly type it out, but I'll try to drop it in the chat. And once, just, yep. Uh, uh, just, just, um, just to save everybody some time, the DEP doesn't actually require all this to be written out. Most of this information appears when you fill in the form itself. Yep. So just add the stuff that's not already in, in the form uh, itself when you, when you fill in the fields. You don't need to write all this out again. So um, if, you, that right? if you have that, if you have that typed in, because as I'm going to show next, you can just drop it off in your describe company. It's mostly to help you remember what you had seen. But if you're able, as you mentioned, Eric, if you're able to go and refer to your idling video, you could take that information off your idling video, but it makes it a little bit easier for you to have that information ready as you're filing in your, but um, any other, I'm welcome to hear any other suggestion. Um, but once you have taken your idling video, you go back to the idling complaint um, website, you select the tab as I refer to add a new complaint. And once you've done that, there's the indicator that shows up. Um, it has an explanation that, you know, you may only submit um, idling complaints about trucks or buses. Um, it defines a truck, it defines a bus, um, and then there's also the exception listed as well. And then there's the qualifying criteria that you should really follow through. Is the bus van capacity 15 passengers or less, including the driver? Was the bus van loading and unloading passengers during the idling event? Was the truck van involved in an activity classified as process? And is it a private vehicle? In terms of the van loading um, um, capacity 15 passenger, I think, or I believe some of those vehicles indicate the number of passenger. If it does not, um, I'm not sure if Eric does not wait for individuals to, to know that information, but if you, once you've indicated no, it, there's a drop down that follows with your information, with your name, your email address, telephone number, and your home address that's already populated. And this is where you take the information from your video um, and you populate here for the person or company associated with your, your complaint. So if the company, if the truck is privately owned um, or individually owned or um, it's a commercial truck, then you'll indicate the information here as well as the, the location and the occurrence prompting your complaint, the date from and to and location, the house number, address, and you'll drop your complaint down here below. And then check that this, what you're stating or providing is true and correct. Just um, just, just one quick um, a point on, on the pre previous page. They say you can't um, go after armored trucks, but um, that's not accurate. I think the DEP will confirm you now can, um, except for two companies um, Rapid and Epic, those are the only ones you can't go after. Everybody else, pretty much you can. Um, that's, that's that's correct, Eric. And also to point out, the um, as you're well aware, the variance is specific to that. They must be in active performance of their job. It's not a generic pass that you can't be sitting in having you know coffee or on a break. It has to be active use. So there are caveats to the variance, which is on the website. But yes, Eric, that's right. But just um, be very careful because um, they, they do have guns. Right, and that's there's a slide for safety. Don't and uh, but I'll take a moment to speak about that. As you're taking your idling video, do not in whatever moment engage or approach the driver. Just take your video and then walk away. If they start talking to you, yelling at you, or you see that they're getting physically violent, just stop recording and leave. Um, don't 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 start harassing. Don't don't get into a physical interaction with any drivers, please. Um, step six. So once you've uploaded 
you're and you file your complaint now comes in a little bit of a legwork um now because you have to then track your complaint to make sure that you're able to receive payment for your participation so um from the dep once you file your complaint um typically you could get a confirmation email for within two weeks um and that's dp um, letting you know that your complaint is being reviewed and if your complaint is approved and dp has decided to file a summon summons then you'll be sent a summons no, um, number including <laughs> including a complete number as well as if a hearing yeah. trial is scheduled please go on mute um so that background noise is not captured and this um takes place like within 45 days of the complaint received and with your complaint number you're able to um search for or track your com um your complaint through the citizen complaint web portal um, or through OATS. Eric, any additional feedback for tracking? Oh, um, there, there's there's a, a lot of ways to do it, but they're, they're complicated and, and I don't wanna eat up your time. You can drop it in the chat. So that way people will be able to capture it and um, take notes of that. But it, as I've mentioned, there is a little bit of legwork. There's multiple ways for you to, um, to track your complaint. You do have to follow up don't just submit file your complaint and then leave it follow through um search through the old website to for hearings information for hearing dates or whether the hearings has been upheld um and right yeah i mean and, it'll, it'll be years probably in, in all likelihood by the time everything's done so you'll have some time to figure it out more important to figure out how to submit something correctly initially right as eric is indicating so again this process it does take a while it uh, takes a couple of, of years, um, like I believe up to 12, 18 months, and it could even be longer for you to finally complete this process and get paid. But if you stay on top of it, you follow through and you have some time to do this, um, it, it's an investment essentially. And I'll go more into that a little bit um, on the later slide. But this is an example of what a confirmation email looks like for DP, it may be various in that, but as I mentioned, there's the, the summons number here, and then you have the scheduled date for the hearing um, and the location. You don't have to attend, um, and this right here, the old ticket finder, it should also include that, so you'll be able to follow that link to uh, track your complaint and the summon the case. So the next step, payment. First, you have to. You also have to set up a pay account. To set up a pay account, you go through the um, controller's website, the PIP pay, pay information portal, and you set up a. You have. You need to have a vendor code, and that is what you use to request payment. So payment is not automated. So it's not. You know, you file for the complaint and you get um, a payment that is deposited into your account. No, you have to request payment once you know you've seen that your summons has um has been upheld and the the settlement is um is paid so this is take a moment to to grab this qr code right here for the payee portal and so again as i mentioned you have to request payment so once your summons has been successfully adjudicated and you follow through everything you've tracked it and you see the hearing is held the person, the company is found guilty, and the either the penalty is being paid or they're requested to pay. Um, you will then send an email to this following address right here, and this is for each time that payments needs to be made. So this is for each complaint that you have filed, and you see that the process has gone on. So tell them your name, your address, your summer's number, um, the the vendor code, and that you were the citizen complainant. Uh, on the case. And again, this is a long process and it could take, this is approximate time, by the way, eight to 12 weeks after you have sent that email to receive um, a response. And um, just to chime in with a, a couple of tips here. Yes. Um, first, I, I think they changed the, the email address they prefer to, uh, it's ecbrevenue at oath.nyc.gov. That's ECB revenue. Um, and the other thing is, it's usually easiest to forward an email you'll get from the DEP called um, NOV generated, because that proves that it's your complaint. Could you repeat? Um, so 
sorry, could you repeat the email for me one more time, Eric? I'm dropping it off in the chat. Uh, sure, it's ECB revenue mm -hmm. at oath.nyc.gov. Thank you. And, and then mm -hmm. you should, usually they look for you to forward your uh, NOV generated email that you'll get from the DEP as part of the process. What is an NOV, um, just for those who are not aware of that? An NOV are the, like the summons that mm -hmm. DEP um, sends to the, the idlers. So when gotcha. they do that, they also send you an email that, um, that gives you some details on when the hearing is planned for, et cetera. But you can also use that to prove to oath that it wasn't, you know, Tana's complaint. Um, gotcha. It was it was your complaint. So they, they like to see that. Otherwise, it could probably delay processing while they check with the DEP. One second, just saying that. Perfect. <coughs> Thank you, Eric. And this is the penalties um, schedule. Um, Alyssa or uh, Charles, could you explain briefly? a little bit on the um, penalty schedule and how that works for first and second offense. Um, I know it's, it's a very, com like, um, very complicated, um, but just a little bit of an overview. Sure, so for the first offense, our stipulation and our first offense are the same dollar amounts. There are different um, codes penalty schedules, they're actually rules now, that have different stipulation versus first offense is to encourage the um, responsible party to make payment. For example, an oath uh, for asbestos, the um, penalty schedule for a stip is much lower than a first offense. Um, as I pointed out, ours is not. A default penalty is when the responsible party does not show to the, um, or does not answer the violation. So it's a heftier penalty because you've chosen to do nothing. Um, then there's second offense and third offense. Um, so that's that's how we determine the, the payment um, based on the, the number of offenses. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. There's the same penalty for the um, subdivision F, which is if it's near a school, it's one minute, but the penalties are the same amount. It's just the defaults are higher because there was no action taken by the responsible party. And, um, and this is a 25% cut. 25% um, if DEP um, up, up reviews your complaint and, and decides to pursue it, it's 50% if the DEP um, does not get to your summons within our 45 day mandate. And there's also the issue that we choose not to pursue um, for the other reason that we have difficulty collecting from out of country penalties so we just say you can pursue that on your own and then the bounty or the percentage is 50% of that penalty amount. So it's 25% of DEP acts on your complaint, 50% of DEP um, does not act on your complaint because of one of those two reasons and then you pursue it on your own. And just, I just, I just want to take a moment to clarify a little bit. Second offense doesn't mean if you recorded um, a company idling and then you catch them, you know, a week later. Um, so the second offense will only apply if it's the same equipment, you know, by that company that you, you have seen hiring and also to, I believe I could be getting this wrong unless I was trying to remember it's two years from when the decision has been made. Our interpretation is that there has to be at least one finding, and yes, within two years of the date of the offense, there's some discussion as to whether or not that's the correct interpretation based on the air code penalty schedule, um, 15 RCNY 4301, I think it's paragraph five that has that language. Um, we, we, we agree that there is a rule. We are evaluating whether or not that has to be changed. Um, we did some additional research and other um, rules that sanitation and DOT have are very similar in their interpretation and their rulemaking and they're more explicit to say it's from the date of occurrence. I think it's sanitation, I think it's SBS. Um, and I think they actually have um, shorter time frame than two years. I think it may be six months for one and one year for another, just doing some legal research in that earlier. But yes, that, that is how we interpret it. And it is equipment based and it has to be the same respondent. That is right. 
And, and on the other hand, the um, the noise code interprets it from the, the data violation, but you don't have to actually have a finding on the first one before you can issue the second one. Right. So there's there's a lot for um, the DEP and the citizens to discuss on this subject, as Alyssa pointed out. Right. So what I would we do have a work, I'm sorry, Diana, we do have a working group, which um, we are appreciative of Eric's time and the rest of the um, Idling Warriors as well as Taina and we act um, because it, it does take a lot of discussion, but that is our interpretation currently based on how the rule penalty is set forth. But yes, to Eric's points and Taina's point, that is our current interpretation of, of a second offense and that's up for discussion. Thank you, Lisa. And yeah, we'll, was, we'll make sure- It was sure a little laxer continue. previously, but they last couple of days, they changed uh, how they're interpreting this. And we'll make sure to keep um, our membership abreast of any changes that happened um, and to be able to clarify the process. Um, so as Eric and I have mentioned, this process does take a long time. Um, it's, um, and it does take a, a research on your end. However, um, this is essentially an investment that you're making for your community. So you're aiding in the cleaning up of the of the air quality. Because as I've mentioned, you know, all those pollutants being released in the um, in the atmosphere is very dangerous and toxic, toxic to residents. Um, and as well, you are making an investment for yourself. So um, your pay account, you could just leave it and have it accumulated, um, so that if summons are approved and um, and successfully um, settled, then you, you know, you'll have some money that you could use to either pay off some mortgage if you have loans, or if you want to take a little bit of vacation, but um, it's not something where you will just turn around next week and have that be deposit in your account. It again, it takes a little bit of a legwork, but I believe if you do the research, if um, you take your time to properly file your complaint, you will be successful. And again, you're not alone in this. We Act is here for you to aid. We're part of the working group, so we'll be able to provide you information. DEP is also here by your side, should you have any questions question. Um, and it's something that anyone can do, any citizen, any um, resident of New York um, who cares about their environment and their community can happily and can participate in. And again, going back to the safety first, please, please, please do not engage the drivers. Don't get into a physical altercation. Don't and also harassing them record as a safe distance. I know I mentioned to get up close and personal to the truck, um, but if you're able to find that the truck is left by itself and the driver is not in close distance, please do that. Related to the armored trucks, again, don't get into a, a dangerous situation. If you see things are starting to escalate, stop recording and leave. And I'll make some space now to comments and questions. And I'm going to take a look at the group chat to see what we're added. Um, and th these are the links that were added on the um, throughout the presentation. Take a moment to, to write them down. We're starting off with the complaint system link for, for setting up an account, the payee information for you to be able to receive payment and become a vendor with New York City, the timestamp camera app, where to go to download for both Google Play and Apple, um, and then the email address for requesting payment. I know there's another one in the chat. Um, please make sure to grab that one. And there's also a support email for DEP. So for example, if you file a complaint and you see that you haven't received that confirmation email yet, um, you can use this email to um, contact DEP. And if you have um, case by case, um, situation that's very not uh, gen, you know like uh, very broad but like specific policy um, and complaint and issues that you have and you can also feel free to reach out to react myself and also please feel free to visit DEP's website on um, the citizen complaint they have some very good best practices listed there um, and also definition for processing device and um, the vehicles as well so I'm going to leave this slide up um, while we discuss the questions. So there was a question. Um, it was about uh, um, yeah, personal information being asked, um, being identified if they like sign up or anything like that. Could you elaborate? Do you mean if if you're? I'm trying to find it. Um, sorry. Will my um, personal information be visible to the ticketed company? So will they know who? uh put in the complaint 
basically. I, right. That... At the hearing, um, it's possible that the respondent will ask um, for that information, and the the judge can request that it be submitted, or the the judge can order that it be submitted into the record. So there's um, no guarantee of being anonymous in this program. So when you submit a complaint, um, currently the DEP asks for this form called a, an affirmation or affidavit form, um, which includes your name. Um, at pretty much every hearing, if the respondent shows up, the DEP will provide that form to the other side. Um, so they'll get your name in all likelihood if they show up. But um, that's something that's being discussed soon. So hopefully in the future, the DEP will stop routinely divulging your personal information. But mm -hmm. no guarantees that so, they're not going to figure it out. Has that been an issue? Has that been uh, has that led to problems of, of safety with that being with uh, personal information being released? I, I'm not aware of any incidents where anybody's been attacked after the hearing. Um, but it, it is a risk. So um, to Eric's point and discussion and what Jerry's saying, we, we only disclose when the administrative law judge requests or requires the representative from DEP to provide the individual's name. It's different, for example, when our inspectors are the complainant. So for example, if you called in a 311 idling complaint, our inspector is the complaint of record because we the DP inspector actually observed it. So there is an expectation of privacy for the original 301 complainant because that complainant did not observe and is not the complainant of record. Whereas in with these citizen complaints, that complainant, that citizen is the person who observed it. And therefore that information is foilable and that information is disclosed at that point with the forms if that is become evidentiary reason, but we don't routinely on our sous fonte say, oh, ALJ person A, citizen complainant 123 is the complainant of record, just to make it a little clear as to why there is this issue at hand. I, I would suggest that first. the DEP carefully check what actually happens in the evidence packets that it submits at hearings, because I've, I've foiled them before, and I've seen that they are being provided to the other side um, virtually whenever there's um, a, a set of evidence emailed over to the other side at, at a hearing. So maybe I just got unlucky and I saw the wrong ones, but you should really check your practices um, instead of making assertions regarding them. I, I, I fully state that if the information has to be disclosed and that information is readily available because it's part of the record. So the opposing counsel or the opposing party is entitled to view the record. But my point is that if there is something being made in terms of the administrative law judge requesting the information, we don't routinely state the name of the complainant unless asked. That, 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 that's very complicated, but I do understand that at most hearings, your name is going to go to the other side. Let's see if there are um, I just do want to note really quickly. Um, Thank you, Tiny, for, for the presentation. You know, we do have the time for questions, but this is also a space for people who never really even heard of the program at all before and kind of understanding it for the first time. So let's not get into any of the weeds of some of the issues that maybe some of you who have a lot of the great experience with this program and, and been really successful and have been going through and really kind of testing it out and really providing DEP with a lot of valuable information. Um, but I do believe um, DP did mention that there is a working group that uh, that exists to kind of discuss some of those more detailed um, issues or, or ways to improve the program. Thank Just you, LJ. Thank you, LJ. Um, and we have one, one other question. Are MTA buses exempt? Um, yes, uh, I would say passenger buses are exempt. Right, guys, DP? So MTA buses are exempt because they're a quasi uh, state agency and our regulations apply uh, by law, basically state agencies are exempt from uh, th this code. And that will also include um, ice cream trucks, which are like processing. Um, yeah. I, I have a question. I, I have a question. But like Greyhound and Bolt are, are fair game, for example. All right. So Correct. if there's a bunch of buses idling in front of a bus depot, 
that is not okay, right? We, we should be calling 311, correct? Yes, we have a problem up like on um, 8th Avenue outside of the um, Port Authority. Uh, it's one area where the commuter buses wait to pick up people. Mm -hmm. And um, it is a it is a problem for us. So if there are other locations, yes, you should call it in. Okay, thank you. Do we have any other clarification questions? I have a question on how you get the uh, location of the vehicle into the video. So the once you got, download the timestamp camera, there is a Google's map. Um, that appears right on the left corner. In addition to that, underneath the times and Dave stamp of that video, there's also the location. But if you don't want to download the app, what I would recommend is once you've taken the video is to go on your phone through open Google's map and then see if you can pull that information. But that timestamp app is very useful as they have the timestamp time and day stamp, as well as the location right at the bottom on the right corner. I know my I had some tech difficulties, but um, it could not show that in the video. But your um, video will show that. Yeah. So we do have another question. Um, someone asks, do we have to explain what we're doing if asked by the driver? I, I mean, yes, you can. It's to an extent to not get yourself into like an alter, but yes, you can say you're just um, you're recording for um, an Ily video. Um, Charles, I see you unmuted. Do you have any suggestions? Yeah, I guess my suggestion is, is go ahead. Sorry, Charles, the other Charles. There's nothing in, in our code of reels that for any communication between the driver and the, and the citizen complaint. Right. So, personally i would have i would not engage them right don't engage right so i take that back do not engage if they ask you what are you doing just you know just just walk away um well t telling them what you're up to is probably not going to calm them down um because right. you're, you're ratting them out <laughs> so yeah um, if, if they say hey what are you doing um you know but um yeah just just as i've yeah as i've said in the slide just like stop recording and leave Um, we asked Charles, did you have uh, did you have another question or did you have a comment? No, I'm good. The, the, the question got answered. Um, the um, the DP uh, has disclaimed all liability if anything happens to you publicly. So uh, be be careful, please. Trees go down. So, Kaina, yes. does um, the representative from the DEP want to add anything on to what you said? Is there anything um, to add? Good point. Alyssa, Charles, um, do you guys, uh, Jerry, do you guys have any helpful insight for our members when, uh, as they go on and um, become a participant? I think you guys did a very good job. The presentation covered um, the information, I think, very well. Um, it is a difficult, um, probably doing the recordings is more difficult than losing your bit, Jerry. It's, it's sometimes um, hard, but um, uh, the, your suggestions in the video, I think are pretty good. So um, I'm not sure we have much more to add, or at least I don't. Yeah, we wanted to thank you, Taina and React. Your presentation was very helpful, it was very informative. Um, it, there definitely is a learning curve. Um, you know, it's it seems maybe daunting at first, but once you've done a few of them, it becomes more road. The um, application is not that arduous. It's more getting familiar with the 
using the, the I'm an iPhone user for full, full disclosure. So it's more, I, I'm not allowed to do these, but it's more getting familiar with the, um, the timestamp app and just getting a little more familiar with uploading your videos. Um, you know, we do have um, ability to, to help you. I know that um, Eric and his group wants to assist as well um, with questions. We're here to help. Um, you know, there are, there is the working group and we're very happy that we act as part of it. Um, it just in terms of helpful information, I mean, I, we, we don't encourage you <laughs> to engage with the individuals, but we um, understand that there's a safety issue to walk away. We, you know, we understand there can be issues, but I think there are, there are ways to be more surreptitious with the viewing, um, capturing the video. You know, we're going to have discussions with the um, within the working group of how many sides of the video you need in terms of front and back and maybe the side of the um, sidewalk, certainly not into the street um, for safety issues. But, you know, we just encourage you to pay attention to our website because we will be updating it. We want to be more helpful. It's, you know, it's, it's a, definitely a collegial kind of environment we want to start to foster <coughs> and fostering. So just thank you to react for your assistance with this. We really appreciate it. First, thank you for joining. Um, and as I mentioned, we'll try to we'll hold more of these workshops as well um, as new people learn about this program and as you're also getting involved into this. Um, if you have time after this to um, download the timestamp app, start getting um, acquainted with it, um, just start taking videos on it. Charles, did you have something you meant to add? Sorry. Yeah, just as, as we mentioned in the working group and in our meetings, um, we're going to be going out to community boards in the fall and in, in Manhattan, particularly boards 10, 11, or 7. Um, so your participation, if we can get you to a community board meeting during that presentation, I think would add more um, because of your local uh, activity uh, in those boards. And we'll bring the information. Um, and so once we have more workshop, any question you have, we'll take those and we'll bring it to the working groups and we'll be able to discuss that. But yes, we'll, we're ha we are happy to participate. Thank you for um, extending that invite to us. Um, thank you for taking the time to join us and stay on and answer the question um, and to the attendees as well. Thank you for taking the time. I hope this has been very informative. Don't be overwhelmed by this. Um, just like with everything new that you're tackling on, just takes a little bit of uh, additional work and legwork. But um, as we've said, this is an investment for your community and an investment for you and your family. Um, and you're not alone in this. Um, just one last question. Someone asked, because we have a few people that's from Virginia. They want to know, does this extend it to them as well? <laughs> Great. Uh, this, this program is only in uh, New York City, but um, LA just um, adopted a resolution to look into adopting it there. So it's it's growing. Uh, Washington DC also um, has doesn't have it as an enforcement program, um, but does have it as sort of um, um, an idling, um, an educational uh, approach to it. So we are seeing it coming into a number of other cities. Hi. Um, DC also has much bigger penalties than New York. So hopefully that gets the, uh, the drivers to actually stop there. Uh, sorry, so Michelle, you had a question? Well, somebody accidentally sent me a direct message chat and obviously I'm not with the program. I'm just finding out information. Um, so I just wanted to read the question that they sent me. Um, is this just for idling trucks? We have a situation where trucks are leaving a demolition site pre-construction with open lids of toxic materials, no covers. So toxic material blows in the windows whenever the toxic lid goes. Do we have, and then I don't know what it says. Do we have, and then it's a bunch of letters. So, and this came from Mary Jane Thompson. So if she wants to give clarification, I'm just passing the message along. So, so technically the, the provision that this is based on 24-182 um, applies to pretty much the whole air code, any air violation, but nobody's really figured out how to effectively report anything than idling so far. But if you have any other air code violations, you can probably send it to Jerry and uh, yeah, she can see yeah, if it's actionable. Yeah, yeah. Jerry, we, we certainly have dust rules and construction dust rules, Jerry. We have a whole slew of dust controls and the rules of the city of New York. I think it's in 
chapter 13 of title 15 <coughs> where prescribe measures to cover and to wet and other um, requirements, but certainly um, you can do that. But if you call 311, we can log it. We will send inspectors to the site to enforce. We actually have um, abatement orders we can issue at construction sites if the dust emissions is of a, of a level that it's being emitted to the open air. So absolutely, we, we can address that. Um, Eric is right, the air code is broad, um, but you can certainly use, um, when each, excuse me, section is broad with the citizen complaints, but certainly go through 301 or you can you know, reach out to DEP and we can certainly go to that location to inspect. So thank you. Yeah, and I'd like to add that we've had those uh, issues in, in Manhattan with construction areas and uh, the citizens got together and called, uh, um, enforced the law and had them had make a stop order and they had to put water on the construction site. So yes, That's they right. do come out and they do do that type of work in making sure that the dust from a construction site does not affect people. And you should call 311 if you have any issues so they wouldn't come out there and make it happen. And you should record it if you see it, that way you have proof of it. So that way, by the time they get up there, because there's not a lot of uh, people to go out there and inspect, you can show them what is taking place. That way they can actually have conversations with the construction managers and you would have proof, okay? All right. Thank you, everyone. We're at the end of time, 731. Um, uh, I hope everybody have a wonderful evening and um, be on the lookout for additional workshops um, and happy Memorial Weekend. Do we have? Thank you so much. You too. You as Thank well. you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you all. Be safe. Very good. Thank you. No, you don't mind staff stay on if you can? Yeah. Okay. All right, you ain't staff, time to go. Patrick Smith, you can stop the recording. Yes, that'll help.